vacation with you might not be so bad. That's the first time anyone said something like that to me. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we are finally going to be talking about Summer Kiaru. In this video, I'll be going through all of her skills, all of her like attributes and like kind of the team comps that you're going to be looking to use her in, as well as the more practical applications such as CB and Arena because she has utility everywhere. She is Summer Kiaru. Before I get into the video, I do want to mention that I will be streaming my Summer Kiaru pools. On top of that, I might be able to like stream a couple more pools from like some other people. There are some kind people who have offered up their pools for me to like, I don't know, grant you guys content and entertainment. And so if you guys are interested in watching, keep an eye out for my stream when this banner drops. Honestly, by now you guys are probably sick of hearing about Summer Kiaru, but like alas today, we are finally going to get it over and done with. That is not to say that you'll never hear about her again, but like uh, screw it. Let's just get on with the video. All right, with that being said, let's jump into Skiaru herself and let's first take a look at her skills. All right, so first off, we have the Union Burst. We've got deal large magical damage to front most enemy. The skill that I want to compare this to is actually Kyoka's UB because this is actually really important when we start talking about Arena. You can see that it is actually identical to Kyoka's UB where you get the 60 times skill level plus one and magic attack by five and you'll see that it is reflected over here as well. Now that's really interesting because everyone calls Skiaru like the Makoto of magic and she still kind of is but like let's try to get through the rest of these skills before we discuss that point. All right, so next we have this one here which is medium magic damage to the frontmost enemy. Again, another straightforward single target skill. Virtually nothing I can talk about here. However, things get more interesting when she gets her UE. And when she does get her UE, she actually gets magic defense debuff on this skill here. The skill upgrades from a medium magic damage up to a large magic damage. So you can see that the multipliers actually go from like 20 to 30 and 1.6 to 2.4. But alas, the more important component of this skill is the magic defense debuff. If we have a look at the quick calculations, we've got 0.6 times, let's say about like level 100 or like level 100. 110 and so you'd be looking at about like 60 m def down now this is really awesome and combined with the fact that it lasts for 12 seconds however remember that this is coming with ue and this is not what we're getting when she is dropping in what like three days time however this should give you like an insane idea on like how important she is moving forward there are a lot of units that are going to be getting ues and then so like some units for example are going to be replaced eriko becomes a powerhouse shinobu becomes a powerhouse however the good thing about skiaru is that she is getting more magic defense down which is freaking insane it just means that she is not replaced in her job. And so with that being said, let's come back to reality and move on to skill two, which is the real medium magic defense down. I say real, but the other one is actually really freaking good as well. And so as you can see, it is a medium magic defense debuff. And so this one is actually scaling on 0.8. And so compared to the last one, this one is giving, let's say 60 at level 100, and this one's getting 80. This one also lasts for 12 seconds. So you can see like, if it's like Summer Kiaru, she's got her UE and she's constantly rotating between skill one and skill two. It's just gonna be like an all you can eat buffet for magic defense debuff. However, that is not to say that she is not a buffet right now, but we will get into that very, very soon. So if I pop over to her EX skill, she just gains more magic attack. Magic attack only scales with her damage. It doesn't give her extra magic defense debuff. However, we're still going to take that because that's freaking awesome. All right, moving on, we've got the bond level bonus and you guys can see the magic attack all over here. And if you guys still have not gotten like your base Kiara to three stars and then like gotten all of her bond levels. So at this point, we can only go up to eight. Then you guys are better get on it because remember that these are actually shared between in each of the variants. So that means that your Summer Kiaru is not only going to be getting these stats from the bond level bonuses, but also these ones over here, including the last line that I forgot to select. All right, moving on. And this is probably one of the most important parts, and that's the attack pattern over here. As you can see, the attack pattern is so short, yet it's so simple. And this is what makes it really, really freaking good. Now let's take the scenario in a pre-UE world, what we are going to be getting in a few days. It's a magic defense down into like some big damage, into some like more medium damage, into magic defense down again. And then we go into into this loop and this is honestly like really freaking awesome. What this is essentially telling me is that every four actions she is going to be dumping the defense down on the boss. So with this in mind I would not really call her like the magical Makoto. However if there is anyone that is close to being magical Makoto it is her. There is virtually no other character that is going to be able to do something like this. For example the only other significant magical defense down unit would be Akari and let's have a look at this one. And as you can see that is a long long loop and she is not going to be getting that magical defense down like very often. If I compare the actual stats of the skills, it is one plus skill level. So that is about a hundred. Again, using that like base level of a hundred, but like that's just like that uptime is just no good. Just by looking at this, this is almost like twice as long. And so like whilst Akari is really good and is still featured in almost every magical comp, there is a massive reason as to why Kiaru is like the queen of magic defense down. It's this short as loop. And if you can imagine with the UE, these ones turn into magic defense downs as well. And so it's there when she 
really becomes the magical Makoto. Defense down, defense down, attack, defense down, defense down, attack, defense down, attack, like, and then it just goes on loop. That is honestly insane. All right, so with this attack pattern out of the way, the next thing I wanted to talk about is actually her position on the field. And so it shows over here, but that's a little bit hard to see. So let me grab another website. And so over here, we are on pre-calc. However, I do need to use like the JP variant because the English one just does not have the data yet. And so as you can see, Summer Kiaru is over here. She is standing right behind Summer Suzume. And what's more important to note is that she's actually standing behind Hatsune, Kiaru, and a whole bunch of like the other healers and mages. Looking at this, she is actually one of the furthest back mages of them all. And so why exactly is this important? I guess this is a great segue into like arena. So I think a lot of you are going to be interested in how she's being used in arena because for the most part, I think everyone's talked about Skiaru enough for clan battle. Slap her in with like a bunch of magical DPS and magical defense down and then away you go. And so yeah, I'll talk about clan battle, but let's talk about arena and the practicality of Skiaru in arena first. So where exactly do you use Skiaru? One of the first things that I actually pointed out is that Kiaru actually has that big UB that is like similar to Kyoka's. So if I come back over here, we have the Union Burst and it's 60 times whatever and it is identical to Kyoka's. However, the difference between Skiaru and Kyoka is that Skiaru actually defends debuffs the opponent, whereas on the other hand, Kyoka actually gives herself magic attack up. Now, both of these units are therefore an answer to Miyako. I don't know how many times we can kill Miyako. At this point, I kind of sympathize for her. But Miyako is actually just such a, like a cucking unit. Like she will screw you up if you're not prepared for her. And so typically speaking, and we're starting to go back into like some arena basics here, but whenever, especially on P arena, when you run Miyako, typically you're going to be running a Tamaki as well. And the reason for that is that Miyako's primary weakness is magic damage. And so therefore in arena, this is probably going to be one of the most common like combos that you're going to see. Just to be clear, this is on defense. So for example, the classic Miyako stall, which I don't think anybody actually even uses these days, it actually looks something like this, right? And so the idea was that it used to actually block like both physical and magical. Miyako is like that wall against the physical and any magical damage Tamaki would take care of. However, that era is done, but this variant definitely still exists. For example, some people run these days, uh, it could be a Kuka and then it could be a Ninon and a Mitsuki, something like that. Or maybe instead of Kuka, it could be like a Nozomi. Instead of like a Mitsuki, it could be this for some anti-physical. There's a lot of variants, but like you guys kind of get the idea, right? When you run Miyako, typically you're going to be running Tamaki as well. And that is kind of like a piece of knowledge that you can use to actually go into like fight P Arena. And so how exactly do you fight against comps like these? Traditionally speaking, whenever I see a Miyako and a Tamaki, I instantly say, well, I need the combo, which is Nozomi, Monika, and Kyoka. Where are they? Over here and over here. Something like this, right? And before I go any further, let me explain why this works on the Miyako Tamaki combo. It's because the Nozomi and Monika combo, they actually are able to get Nozomi's UB off before Tamaki is able to kill the Kyoka. And so if they have like a Kuka, for example, then I'll put in a Suzuna. Suzuna is just a great counter against Kuka. However, when she misses, she is not exactly the greatest counter. And then so if the enemy team is like stall heavy, then I'll do something like that. Just because if the enemy team is stall heavy, it means that they are not doing damage to you. And so therefore Nozomi is actually enough to soak up the damage. However, if they do have like some level of damage, then you're probably going to be looking at like a healer or something. A lot of people hate it, but like some people run Maho, especially when there's a Ninon on position two on the other side, or if there is a Tamaki on the position two on the other side as well. However, somehow we have strayed so far from Skiaru that I need to like reel it back in. And so back to it, Miyako, Tamaki combo on defense, typically you start running something like this. However, especially for P Arena, a lot of you Kyoka owners already know Kyoka is actually a really highly valuable asset. And so many counter comps, especially if you look at like PCR defense actually features Kyoka. Okay, maybe none on this page, but like, uh, believe me guys, like I swear, Kyoka is everywhere. And so what Kyaru really does is that she is like in that back line and she's also firing off a massive UB and she's also defense debuffing. So hopefully what this means is that your Skiaru is actually going to be able to be used in place of Kyoka. Anyway, so what I'm really trying to say is that especially with like this combo, when you know you are facing a Miyako, typically speaking, you're going to be using this combo right? Because this is a tried and true classic. Like we know that this is going to work in Miyako killing. And so what that means is that you can use Skiaru in all of the other places. This is one of the comps that I hated so much when it was first popularized. So this is what we refer to as the Turbo Eo. And why it's the Turbo Eo is because it's got the Yukari juicing up the Eo and we've got the Monica like making everyone go faster. And so Eo just gets her UB off so fast and it's just like, it's hell. It's absolute hell. My favorite counter to this is actually this one over here. And so you can see that the idea here is that you shield with Yukari and you also give the TP to the Yui. On the other team, we can see that it's actually just a Nozomi tank. And so I would say that Kyoka actually could be like not featured here. And the reason I would say that is because like the Kyoka, Monika, Nozomi combo should be used into the Miyako. There are obviously way more ways to like 
like actually deal with that Miyako Tamaki combo. However, I just wanted to bring like the idea of priority into like all of this. And what I mean by prior is like, for example, if there is a third team with a Miyako and you know that it's there, then the Kyoka needs to go there. And so therefore Kyoka gets priority over there. However, you do need to watch out for like positioning mishaps. This is actually a prime example, but I think it actually still works. But Kyoka actually stands behind Yui in this instance, but Skyaru would actually stand in front. And so therefore the Yukari would actually like juice up the Skyaru instead of the Yui. And a big idea of this comp that you're actually healing up like all of that AoE damage. Just from personal experience, I have actually successfully replicated this combo, but with a Kiaru instead of a Kyoka. Yes, it does mean that the Kiaru gets the juice, but like this combo in particular, it actually still works. And so to really sum all of that up, I want you guys to kind of remember like Skyaru is kind of like a Kyoka replacement. For me personally, everywhere Miyako went, I had to put my Kyoka there. And so this is actually a massive help to me. However, this actually affects you guys who have Ilya a little bit less because Ilya is another way of dealing with Miyako. And so yeah, I'm really sorry that we had to go like really into the fundamentals for PvP, but I hope you guys kind of get the idea as to like, you know, where you would actually use Skyaru. All right, with that being said, we want to use the same kind of learning and extend it into P Arena. Typically when you're going in blind, like for me, I have like all three blind teams. You're going to kind of be scared of that Miyako. And what Skyaru is actually going to let you do is like blind hit those Miyakos a little bit more effectively. However, just remember to like separate the Skyaru away from the Kyoka so that you actually have two teams targeting potentially Miyako comps. This is not always the right move. Like you can just like do ghost hits and then like proceed to attack. However, I do think that this gives you like a way better chance at knocking down the Miyakos. As for defense, like, I don't know, do you guys put Makoto on defense? The answer should be no, but if you guys do, I mean, that's kind of respectable, I guess. But no, Skyaru does not go on defense and she should be used on offense only. All right, I think that's it for PvP for now, but if you guys do have any questions, just let me know. Let's move on to clan battle. And honestly, this segment can be really, really short. Whenever there is a magical team, there is always going to be an Akari and always going to be a Skyaru. There is no magic team here, so like I'm starting to look like a clown right now, but let's go on to the next month and you guys can already see. Skyaru, Akari, Kyoka. Skyaru, Akari, Koka. Skyaru, Akari, Kyoka. I literally do not need to show you guys anymore. Actually, you know what? Let's just go into one of the further months into the future. And so this is like way, way down where there are a whole bunch of units that are actually released. We've got Christina, we've got Tomo, and like physical is actually looking pretty good again. However, if I look for Skyaru, Skyaru, or any magic comps, we're going to see Skyaru, hopefully Akari, but probably Skyaru. I can almost 100% guarantee you, you're always going to see Skyaru. Look at that. It's a wet cat. Skyaru, 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 Skyaru. Every single magic comp. There is not a single magic comp that does not feature her. I'm coming over here and you can see Skyaru, Skyaru, Akari, Akari, Akari. Skyaru, 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 Skyaru. All Skyarus. She is everywhere. You cannot escape her. You, you cannot escape her at all, guys. Even just running her on order, it's going to be so massive, right? Because she is just like constantly pumping out that defense down. There actually just really is not much to say, especially with the release of this worksheet. This worksheet has made like everyone's lives so much easier, to be honest. To the point where you can actually just like copy a, a whole bunch of these comps, uh, assuming you're willing to put in the work for the timelines. But look at that, Skyaru in every single magic comp, and then all you have to do is click the video and then like play it out. Obviously, you do need like the star requirements to 100% make it work, but like to be honest, as long as you like do it semi-auto, you should be fine. And what I mean by semi-auto, because we still do have like the RNG element of Ilya here. And for you guys who did use Ilya on the crab, like, oh my God, here we go again. But yeah, funnily enough, I can actually keep this clan battle segment like really, really short. All you guys have to do is like one of two things, either follow this worksheet or like follow kind of like the general principles for CB teams. And just a quick summary on those general principles, you want two defense downs and like a big, a big attacker. Defense down, defense down, attacker. Defense down, defense down, attacker. Attacker. Defense down, defense down, attacker. And if you really can't handle the heat, defense down, defense down, attacker, and tank. It truly is as simple as that, guys. That's just so ironic, like how I don't even have to talk much about CB because like all of this already exists. Honestly, I think for Skyaru and for like probably every character from now on, there's probably more to talk about like in arena than there is for clan battle, especially when everything is actually literally written out for you here. All right, guys, with that being said, I'm going to quit YouTube because my job is now redundant. I'm just freaking kidding because I love YouTube and I want to stay here for you guys. However, with that being said though, it is time to wrap this video up. I've got a secret message for you guys and that is double death down. Double death down because I need to ingrain it into your heads, okay? But honestly, you guys probably already know that. And so if you guys could drop double death down into the comments below, I would really, really appreciate it. It means that you've actually watched all the way to the end of the video and I am very grateful for that. Otherwise, if you guys have found this video kind of helpful or mildly entertaining, then please consider a like, a sub, a follow, a pin, a 
can, be sure to drop by the Discord if you guys are having any troubles. And if you guys would like to support the channel, there are a couple of ways down in the description below. We got some affiliate links and I still think they're not working because Bluestacks is being like... But otherwise, we do have a membership thing in which you can get a sweet little badge. Otherwise, final reminder, keep an eye out for the stream. I am so excited to actually go live again with you guys. And hopefully you guys won't have to watch me spark freaking some Kiaru. And so as a wise man once said, all good things must come to an end. And so with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.